Thank you, Doug. As many of you already know, today marks the two-year anniversary of the death of one of America's most beloved pop culture icons, Gidget Hernandez, more commonly known as the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Gidget began her career after her trainer, Steve Chipperton, discovered Gidget could not only talk, but could speak three languages fluently. Early on, Gidget displayed a keen canine sense of humor and would often surprise Steve with elaborate costumes she put together with simple items she found around the house. One such getup landed Gidget on the cover of PetSmart's monthly Bad Dog magazine. Seeing dollar signs in Gidget's potential, Steve immediately took Gidget to advertising giant William Morris in New York City in hopes of making Gidget's dream of Hollywood stardom come true. Television seemed to be the perfect medium for Gidget's unique talents, and before long, Hollywood came a-knockin'. A string of short-lived TV series ensued, which included a seemingly clever canine remake of the classic TV and movie series Our Gang Little Rascals, now called Little Darlings. Followed a year later by another remake of a popular 60s TV show, Sea Hunt, this one called Dog Battle. But the producers soon discovered Gidget was not the best of swimmers and did not readily take to water. So NBC quickly developed another can't-miss vehicle for their eager star called Ninja Pooch, which the public never fully grasped and so like her two previous projects only lasted for three episodes. Not to be discouraged, most will remember Gidget barking orders to an ensemble cast where she played the first ever canine female wartime general titled The Commander. Yet, in spite of Gidget's unique qualities, none of these shows caught on with the American public, leaving Gidget licking her wounds and her sporadic career stalled for the first time in three years. Hungry for work, Gidget changed her look and was briefly involved in another soon-to-be flop when the Animal Planet came up with its own version of WrestleMania called Animal Smackdown. But the grueling schedule and constant body slams left Gidget dejected and bruised, so Steve and Gidget both decided it was time to rethink Gidget's fledgling career. Gidget took six months off to relax and travel with her sometimes boyfriend, Winston, where the two soaked up the good life that Gidget had never known. <laughs> Upon her return, Gidget found a most unusual offer, this time from theatrical movie studio Dimension Films, which was about to shoot the first of what would become a series of three very successful horror films called Scream. The original storyline called for a small dog to become the protagonist, terrorizing a sleepy Midwestern town. But after several screen tests, the producers learned that Gidget could never really grip a knife convincingly, so she was callously dropped in favor of a human with hands. Feeling more dejected than ever, Gidget fell into depression and wondered if she would ever fulfill her dream of becoming a Hollywood star. But as luck would have it, William Morris, only two weeks later, landed their first commercial client, Burger King, who were searching for a canine mascot to represent its product. This was Gidget's first foray into the fickle world of advertising, but she was up for anything. However, this offer soon faded when Gidget kept eating all the photo shoot products before a frame of film could be shot, but it planted a seed of hope which Gidget clung to like a dog to a bone. The desperate pooch was then involved in a string of offers as TV pitch pup, changing her image and look with each new product, including a Starbucks spokes dog, a lens crafter's eyewear mascot, and a misguided stint as the American Dairy Association's poster cow. Until finally the call that Gidget had been hoping for came in the spring of 1997, when Lee Portman at Taco Bell had the ingenious angle for pitching their greasy fare. A taco revolution? I am there. Why not have a likable talking chihuahua introduce their products to America? And Gidget was the perfect choice, and of course, the rest is history. Bless you, Taco Bell. Gidget was featured on Taco Bell commercials from 1997 until 2000. She was now finally enjoying the recognition she so readily deserved. The Taco Bell dog became a household symbol. Gidget's face was everywhere. Merchandising contracts suddenly flooded her Beverly Hills office on a daily basis. From cupcakes to Kmart casual wear, Gidget memorabilia was everywhere. Her face was on nearly every store shelf in America. She even had a recurring part on Sesame Street as Big Bird's sidekick. For three years, Gidget enjoyed the spotlight that Benny only dreamed of, when suddenly 
The news of a drunken, illicit affair hit the tabloids, and Gidget found out just how fleeting fame can be. Taco Bell had no choice but to announce it would no longer feature the wisecracking canine as their spokespup. And again, Gidget was jobless and without a friend. In the fall of 2001, Gidget briefly tried to revamp her career with a quickly produced reggae record album featuring Gidget's sultry voice. But sales were lackluster and she soon turned to drinking and drugs. A series of arrests soon followed as her health quickly deteriorated. Until that fateful day when Steve found Gidget's lifeless, barely recognizable body dead on the floor of her Brentwood mansion. Gidget was gone and the dream had ended. I don't know about you, but that hits right here. We miss you, Gidget. Back to you, Doug.